Mark Hall. I am an associate professor in the Department of Physical Therapy at the University of Alberta, and I am currently the academic coordinator of clinical education, which means that I, uh, it's a long title for someone who coordinates all the student clinical placements. Well, I think I have always enjoyed working with people. I enjoy, uh, well, in school, I enjoyed things like biology, science. As I was nearing university, I had settled on either engineering or physiotherapy or medicine. And uh, I spent some time with one of my aunt's friends who owns a few physiotherapy practices in, in South Africa. And I spent some time with her in her clinic and uh, I decided that I wanted to be a physiotherapist. I went to university in Johannesburg. It was a pretty large university, probably 35,000 students, which is very similar to the University of Alberta. South Africa is obviously not as resource rich as Canada is, um, and technology was quite different even when I was a student, um, which is not that long ago, but it does feel like a while ago. Uh, we sat in a, in a lab, a, a lab or lecture th um, theater, but most of our physiotherapy stuff was in a lab. We would sit at our plinths, which were not high-low plinths, they were wooden plinths, and take notes, um, and notes from overhead projectors. So I didn't get PowerPoints. I don't even think PowerPoint existed when I was a student. Um, so I had to actually write all my notes, and I didn't get all the handouts that I that you as students get. So exams were stressful for me. I think exams are stressful for everybody. I think they're supposed to be stressful. I think you learn harder when they are. Um, our exams, our practical exams, were on real patients. And my instructors, my professors would walk around a hospital and find a patient and I would walk into a room and that would be my exam mm -hmm. and I would have to assess or treat a patient in half an hour or an hour so I think that was pretty stressful. I lived away from home when I was going to university which I can't remember if that was a good or a bad thing I think that was pretty good I was happy to be out on my own um, but it's also challenging you don't have the support network of being away from home um, but I was in a city where all my friends lived, so I had that support network. I think uh, university is stressful. I, um, I think like many students that get into physiotherapy, um, I've had high grades in, in high school, and uh, I went to university, and in first year university, I remember doing my first midterm or whatever it was in chemistry and I had I got 55% for the test and I was an A student in chemistry before and that was something that I was really interested in so that was devastating for me and I did okay in um, in chemistry eventually um, but it certainly is different to, um, to what I had experienced in high school. And uh, I think that is something that our students struggle with in that you are all high achieving students, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to get into this program. And, uh, and you come into these um, courses in physical therapy that are challenging um, and you're all working hard, but you are we don't all have the same aptitude in all of these different courses and so some of you will do well and some of you struggle in some of the courses um, and that's okay um, but I think that's difficult for students to wrap their heads around that not everybody in the class is an A student anymore One of the things I remember clearly, one of my, the instructor who, uh, the professor who taught me cardiorespiratory um, inspired me, obviously, to pursue graduate studies in that area, to work in that area, and I currently teach in that area. Um, 
and going into physiotherapy I think that I think that I felt what a lot of students felt I was going to go in and I was going to work with sports people and and work in a private clinic own my own clinic and um, and that was going to be my life and then I got into physiotherapy and because it is such a broad profession you're exposed to all these different things and um, she really inspired um, me to pursue further work in cardiospiratory physiotherapy. I remember all of my professors actually, they, in, they uh, inspired me or terrified me in different ways uh, and I learned a lot from them um, and I still uh, keep in touch with some of them to this day. I actually went to the World uh, Physiotherapy Conference in, in Singapore this year and that's a conference that happens every four years and some of my props were at that conference and they were at the World Conference four years ago in Amsterdam and I saw them there and it was really nice to just reconnect with them as not as my professors anymore but as colleagues and to talk about the good old days uh, so I have very fond memories of my program um, I think I felt that I was well prepared um, leaving that program but if I really think about it, I'm not quite sure how prepared you can be just graduating from physio school, I think. And what we tell students is that it's going to take a while for you to feel comfortable and for you to feel competent in those areas. And I think I felt that I was comfortable and competent when I left, but it really takes a year or two to settle in and to figure out exactly how things work. So, well, I think um, if that is your goal and your dream is to be a physiotherapist, then you obviously, you, you have to work hard to pursue that dream. So our, um, in order to get into physiotherapy, in any program across the country is is primarily based on GPA and students are selected for interviews or other admission um, procedures based on GPA first so if you want to get into physio school you have to focus on the courses in your undergraduate degree so that you do get a high GPA so that you are competitive when applying for physiotherapy schools Physiotherapy is a respectable profession, right? You are looked up to by society based on the fact that you are a physiotherapist. It's just like being a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or, or any other professional. You're looked up to by society and it comes with great responsibility. So we don't just give the degree to anybody. You have to earn it because there is a lot of information that you need to know. You are a go-to person for knowledge about movement, about pain, um, about function, and uh, so th there is a lot of content that you need to learn to be a physiotherapist. Um, so we don't make it hard on purpose, it just is, it's challenging. There's a lot of volume that, that you need to learn, um, but it is worth it. I think it's a very exciting time when you when you finish your degree and I'm probably not typical of most students because I graduated from my bachelor's degree and I started my master's degree the next month. Um, I was approached by my supervisor at the time to about a job did I want to supervise students at a hospital, 16 students, um, as sort of a university liaison for this particular hospital. That was quite a daunting prospect to me because I had just graduated the week before and I said to her, well, I, what, what do I know? Um, I don't really have that experience. And she said that I had more experience than they did. And I was relatively, obviously very relatively close in um, education timing to them. And so I could provide feedback from the perspective of the university and the coursework that I had done. Um, so I took that job on and it was 
a really rewarding job for me and it's one of the reasons that I try and um, emphasize to current students, to graduating students, to physiotherapists about how good it is to supervise students, how rewarding it is and how necessary it is to ensure the sustainability of our profession to pass our knowledge on to the students that are coming behind us. If I had advice for students is I think um, is to keep your options open and to look at what motivates you, what interests you. Um, but also, I've, I have a number of mentors. One of my mentors has really instilled in me the need to, to look at what our population needs, what our community needs, and what we um, as physiotherapists can do to fill that need in the community or within a population and not necessarily what we can do for that population but how can we fill a need that the population has or that the community has and I think obviously the job market is changing um, healthcare is changing and how we deliver healthcare is changing in Canada around the world and I think as physiotherapists we need to be innovative in in how we deliver services that meet the needs of the community. So I think you need to keep your, your doors open um, and your options open. I think um, some students that are near to graduating think that they have to find their ideal job today uh, and they have to know today where they want to work. And I think that because our profession is so diverse, um, and you haven't had all of, you haven't experienced all of the clinical areas in your placements. Uh, I think some students or some graduates end up in in one avenue and then figure out that that actually isn't really for them, and they pursue something else. And that's that's also okay. And so, they I think you need to give yourself the latitude that that may be possible. It may take you a year or so to figure out what you're interested in, or you may do something for ten years and then decide to change. Like I didn't. I didn't expect to be in academia when I, certainly when I went into physio school, uh, and I didn't expect to be in academia when I, when I finished physio school. Um, but that's where I ended up, and it's something that I enjoy, but that certainly isn't how I set out. And uh, so I think keep your options open and, and look for a path that, that inspires you and, and that'll make you happy. A lot of students come into physiotherapy wanting to work in MSK, and, and MSK is a, is a large market for physiotherapists, and, and that is where the majority of physiotherapists work. I don't think that cardiorespiratory physio is as sexy as it was in the past, because I think for a lot of students, it's viewed as just walking patients. But I think that there is a lot more that can be and should be done for those patients. Um, I think we need to look more at programming and what we can do for whole body health and cardiovascular health and prevention of disease than just looking at what happens uh, in the hospital. Um, we don't get the opportunity to teach a lot about that because we have to teach a certain skill set um, for practice. Um, for me, uh, the epitome of working for car in cardiac respiratory physio is working in the ICU and I think that that is an environment that really uses our scope of physiotherapy cardiorespiratory knowledge um, to its fullest uh, as well as some of the more um, challenging uh, surgical um, units I think really do utilize our skill set a lot so I, th I think cardioresp is not is is not seen as such a desirable um, avenue to pursue, um, but it is such a necessary component of our profession and for the well-being of the patients that we serve that we do have physiotherapists that are interested in that area. Well, I think just to reiterate what I have said before, it really is 
a great profession to be a part of. Um, there are certainly a lot of opportunities. You will never be without a job if you're willing to, to look for something. It may not be exactly where you want it at the time, but there is always something for physiotherapists to do. And I think consistency is, is key. Like we need to continue to learn. Our profession needs to continue to evolve. We need to refer back to the evidence, the, the um, research evidence to help us advance our profession. Um, and it is not just, I learned this once and I should be okay. We need to continually be updating our skill set and, um, and looking at our competence. And, and that takes continual effort. It's, it's not a, like I said, it's not a first to the finish line. It's not a cramming profession. It, it requires consistent work, but it is a very rewarding profession to work in. Um, and it's worth it.